Welcome to the Random Workshop, where four random guys build, refurbish and reinvent random projects. Since we do this on a daily basis, we decided to start a channel and basically showcase what we do. So when it came to deciding what to do for our first video, we had quite a heated debate um, that was quickly decided by the wife. I need you to make me a backflow burner that is not affected by the wind. Okay, so for those that don't know what a backflow burner is, it's a type of incense burner that has a brilliant feature where the smoke doesn't rise, um, rather it cascades down the burner. It really does look spectacular until someone walks past or there's a slight breeze. The smoke gets disturbed and the whole effect is lost. So, after a little bit of thinking, uh, we came up with a concept where it's basically having the falling smoke encased in some sort of see-through bubble that will protect it from any air movement that would other dis otherwise disturb it. So, let's get started. As is usual with our projects, uh, we used items lying around the house in the workshop for our new backflow burner, starting with an empty bottle, a glass cutter and some masking tape. Using the masking tape, we simply masked off the top of the bottle. Uh, this was to give us a straight guideline for when we actually started cutting the glass. For cutting the bottle, we just followed the masked line, trying to stay as straight as possible until we had gone completely around the bottle and we had a decent continuous score line. The next step was to crack the bottle on the score line and hopefully, thumbs, holding our thumbs, get a clean break. Here we used a handheld gas torch and some water. By heating the score line evenly and then quickly submerging it in the cold water, the sudden temperature change causes the bottle to crack on the score line. And voila, we've got a pretty clean break. Um, we did have some larger pieces that didn't break properly, but we found just by tapping on them gently, they broke off nice and cleanly. We still had some soft, sharp edges left and uh, by using 80 grit sandpaper and some elbow grease got the edges sanded down to the point where it's pretty smooth and it's not going to cut anyone. Once we were satisfied with the edges, we moved on to building the base and the top of the new backflow burner. Uh, once again, we just used an old pine wood shelf that we had lying around. Uh, we found a paint can that was about four centimeters wider than the glass, and we used this to lay out a circle to cut out for our base and our top. Once we'd marked our circles, we just used a router to cut out a rough shape around the circle. And then we used the router to clean up right up to the edges and try to get it as smooth as possible. And there we go, we've got our two cutouts, one for the top and one for the bottom. The next thing we did was put an edging blade onto the router just to give a nice contour to the top and bottom sections of our new backflow burner. Once we've done that, we mark the center for the top so that we could have a hole going through it. So that's where the smoke will be coming through. 
on our backflow burner. Next what we did was we needed an insert to insert into the wood so that it obviously wouldn't burn with the incense. Luckily we had a little short piece of copper tubing lying around, measured that, used a pipe cutter and cut out a section that would fit exactly into the hole and was the same depth as our top. Once we'd done that, we needed to arrange some sort of way of keeping the glass off the bottom of our backflow burner, because otherwise what's going to happen is the smoke is just going to pool inside the glass, and eventually you're not going to be able to see anything inside it. So what we did was we took some scrap wood again, cut out little square sections, and then carefully cut them into little L pieces. The L pieces were there so that the glass would rest on them, and we'd have about a 5 mil gap between the glass and the base. We did three of these little L shapes. And these were laid out on the bottom of the back flow, <laughs> the back flow burner. We checked that the glass would fit in nicely, which it does. And once we'd done that, we simply super glued them in place. And there you go, there's our bottom stand for our new backflow burner. So it was time to do a little test. So we put in a little um, gemstone the wife had, lit the incense, and it works. Even when we were blowing on it, and moving around, the smoke stayed in place. We then made three tabs for the top of the, of the backflow burner, just that it wouldn't fall off or anything like that. Basically the same as we did for the bottom. These weren't L-shaped though. These were just little pegs to keep the top in place. Now it was time to start off the finishing off process. We used 100 grit sandpaper and just rounded off the edges very nicely. Once we were satisfied with edges, that they were nice and smooth and rounded, we were ready for the next step. For the next step we were going to stain the wood. So we used a, a product we've used before, it's a gel stain, so easy to use, no paint brushes or anything needed, no mixing, it's just a gel, give it a shake and you can apply it with a cloth. Just out of interest sake, uh, we used the ebony stain. The reason for this is that 
parts of the wood had already been stained ebony so it was going to be a lot easier just to touch up the whole thing make it black instead of sanding it all down and making a different color There you go, first piece done. We obviously did both pieces and we're not going to show it here, but we actually put a second coat on just to cover up any little blemishes and places where the stain hadn't taken well the first time. We left those to dry and the nice thing with this gel stain is it doesn't take long at all um, to to dry probably about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes and you can apply the next coat. Once we were sure that the stain had dried nicely and we had put our second coat on, it was time for varnishing. Here again we kept it nice and simple, we just used clear varnish and the clear varnish is just going to bring out a really nice shine on the wood and basically deepen the black. Here again we're not going to show you the whole process um, but we varnished it, waited for that to dry. Unfortunately the varnish takes quite a while to dry so we actually left it overnight and then early the next morning put a second coat on so that we'll be ready later in the day. Already you can see that the varnish is giving it a nice sheen and I don't know, just, just making it look much better. We decided to make sort of some sort of feature in the middle of the of the backflow burner. Um, so again, we politely um, acquired some gemstones from my wife and super glued them all together in place on the base of the backflow burner. This is just to break up the, the smoke and give it an interesting effect at the end of the day. Now, if you watch the video carefully, you'll see that we didn't actually glue the gemstones to the wood. And we did this for a reason. We wanted to be able to glue them together, make a feature, but we still wanted that feature to be removable. So if you wanted to change what's in the bottom of your backflow burner, it's not an issue. You can. And there we go, last gemstone on, a couple of drops of super glue, wait for a couple of seconds, and there we go. So here's our finished product, and uh, yeah, we're quite impressed with the way that it came out. So if you look carefully, you can see we've lit the, the incense. And there's a thin line of smoke that's starting to trickle down directly onto our gemstones. Now as the incense burns, that smoke will get thicker and thicker 
and the effect will just get better and better. Let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see it properly. And there you go, you can see the smoke cascading down the stones, hitting the base and starting to pool on the base. Now if we didn't have the gaps at the bottom, that smoke would just fill the entire container. But because there's that gap, you'll see it's starting to pool, and now the smoke is even starting to cascade off the base, and eventually it'll end up on the table. Okay, so that's it for our first video. I hope you enjoyed it um, as much as we did making this. Yes, please watch out for more videos.